Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, friends, colleagues, and uh, new listeners, and anybody who listens in on a regular basis. As you know, we love to get characters and personalities on the show. My goodness me, we've got a special one today. Um, the lady's name is Liz Mosscroft, and I'm always getting that wrong, so hopefully that's okay, Liz. Um, CEO and founder of Gear Up TV. Now, I was going to introduce Liz as one leg in the air, which was something that we, uh, we had a little joke about when we first met. Um, but Liz, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Chris, and thanks for calling me a special character. That, that will that actually has made me very happy this morning. I love that. Thank you. Uh, you are indeed. You are indeed. And you're, 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 you're full of fun and energy. And I've watched some of your videos and uh, especially the Christmas one. And I loved, I loved the gentleman who didn't understand what that, uh, what that was about, about, you know, 10, whatever it is, laying hens and four maidens and whatever the song goes. But I thought that was very good. Now, Liz, really, really pleased to have you on board. And um, what I'd just like you to do, if you wouldn't mind, is if you can just give a little bit of background of, of how and why you transitioned from an aviation specialist journalist into this craft of, of you know, giving people leads, helping them with sales, promotions, and I've got to say, putting a smile on people's face whilst they're learning, as well as getting information. Yeah, thanks, Chris. It's been an interesting journey, or it is continuing to be an interesting journey. It started off with a creative desire. I was at the EAA Air Venture Show, AKA Oshkosh in Wisconsin for the first time ever four years ago. And I just couldn't get enough pictures of my phone, write enough copy to describe the aviation Glastonbury unfolding around me. And I was just joyous there. So I took out my iPad and just shot a load of video and there is a 10 minute video somewhere that a friend kindly edited and I still like watching it. I mean, it's monstrously long by today's standards and it's terribly badly shot. The audio is awful and it's still one of my favorite pieces of work ever because it was such a fun experience. And also practically the industry I'd been making my living in the print journalism was shrinking I was always a freelancer I was never um, assigned to any one publication so I've got lots of friends and clients across the industry because I wrote for several publications and it became apparent to me at the time there was not really unless you uh, had a tv show there wasn't anything that was just specialist video content to sponsor i tried that for a bit and so i've always done this gear up tv pretty consistently since i started which is uh little bulletins really sometimes they've been more sensible than others sometimes i've been um clowning around a little bit and then it morphed into realizing, you know, we've helped people sell their services using video and you can do that in an educational way. Yep. Um, you can do that with humor. You can do that at the moment with authenticity, particularly the last few months that we've all experienced. It's been important to tell the story of what's going on and how people have come through that. So, and video to me now is the natural form, most natural form of communication media. No, I, I totally agree. And a couple of things that you said there, storytelling, it's so important because people can, people can get into it if they know the beginning, the end. And it's like um, when, when we were all kids, you know, once upon a time and happy ever after. There's a lot of things in between, whether it's villains, heroes, storms, sunshine, days, etc. So if they can align to it, it's brilliant. And also the most important thing, and I think which, which comes across in the videos, Liz, is the reasons why. And um, I, watched, I watched one also with somebody who was on one of our shows, Adam Twiddell. Oh. And, and you guys were talking very shortly and in a very, very casual way. But, you know, the, the, the obvious and the direct points came across with regard to the single engine turboprop coming into the market and what, you know, what a difference it would make. I thought it was really good. Oh, thank you. It's actually 
one of the videos we did for Private Flight, Adam has been brilliant. He, when I said I was going to do this, he said, right, I'm going to be your first client. And they were, and they still are our clients. And they're, you know, very uh, partial to Private Fly. They're a great team. I love, they're so innovative. I love what they do too. And we did a video for them about the Pilatus PC-12, which sold, I can't say that it got the sale, but it helped. Yeah seal the deal for um, another company that was selling Pilatus PC-12s. A client saw the video we'd done with Private Fly, which was a walk around aimed at people in the charter market. And he cited that video to Edwin Brennick Mayer of Orion's Own Aviation. And he said, look, because of that video, that sealed the deal and I decided to go ahead. I do have to, qualify that with so a lot of hard work gone into the sales process before that. However, the fact that a video can then switch that yeah, yeah, switch yeah. in someone's brain, it's a very powerful tool. Yeah. No, no, I, I 100% agree. And, and I love the chemistry between the two of you. And Adam's story in itself is a, is a lovely one, how he started, his background, etc. So that's that's lovely. But the, the simplicity of the issue and, and how that you know, the, the single engine turbo prop was going to put so much pressure um, was, was great. But what I also liked as well was the obvious um, issues, which is price, age and time. And um, the explanation and, and, you know, you don't normally associate with that level of detail in such a short interview. So I thought it was brilliant. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I think um, one of the things that... Um, is very useful is before doing any video interview um, or particularly if you're doing it for a, a marketing and sales purpose is definitely script it forget about the script afterwards but know what you're going to say and make yeah. sure that you cover those points because it is a very different beast being mm. interviewed for a video than it is for a print publication yeah yeah, no, no, I, I, I could see that. I totally agree. As long as you've got, again, it's, as long as you've got the background story and you know where it's going, you don't need to be doing things off of a piece of paper and, you know, so formal and structured that it, it actually becomes boring. And it was the setting that you had was excellent, which I'm assuming, you know, you've got multiple settings. But again, coming back to one of the things, I, I, I think he said, he said that um, the, the, the age of an aircraft is influenced subject to where you are so private jet uh, travelers in the states will go and will accept an older aircraft whereas in europe people want a, a much younger or you know up to five years i thought that was important but also the other area now ever more so with this covid is the fact that the closer you are to some of these smaller airports that's going to bring them online as well now so there's going to be huge opportunity to get closer to the logistics network whether it be train m25 whatever yeah it really does um both broaden and shrink your ability to get anywhere shrink in terms of time you can yeah. get somewhere much faster and broadens the range of places you go there's the old saying that a mile of runway can take you thousands of miles anywhere in the world and it's very uh i think it's critical now that we're really mindful of the fact that we have a great network of airfields in the UK, not to shut them down um, by not really thinking through, especially with the greener tech that's coming online with a lot of yep. these smaller aircraft, the uh, possibility of connectivity in the UK. It, it's absolutely vast and we're not using it properly. Yeah, no, totally agree. And also now the pricing, everybody assumes that you have to be a, you know, a footballer or a, a film star or a top CEO. But now the pricing is getting to a level where people can really start to consider it, especially when they're gauging their risk appetite with the with the virus. Yeah. And, and, and this is where we've all done ourselves. There are a couple of factors here that are particular bugbears for me. One is that the way... Um, private aviation has sold itself. So a lot of people's perceptions are these uh, alcohol fueled rock star football, which is not fair on all the football teams and alcohol. You know, you only see the 
uh, the wild stuff that's reported. And actually, the vast majority of this particular sector, this particular way of traveling is by business people and leisure people. I, I actually was, I did, I was, did a shoot the other day for a client at Farnborough Airport. And there were people in the waiting room there who were just going on holiday with their family. And they were the most innocuous group of people obviously people who could afford to go and yeah. fly at wherever they were going, but it was a real, it was a family group going yeah. somewhere. And whenever I go in those airports, that's all I've ever seen is family groups or business people. I know obviously you get the celebrities yeah. out there, but the vast majority of flights are, are business flights. Yeah. I think that's a great opportunity there to, you know, to make people realize how accessible it is but also that it's not something that you should be ashamed of I, i've spoken to many people now and, and one of the common i would say little niggles that they have is especially from the media who are always negative about anything successful and i don't understand it you know i think you should celebrate success and people who can afford to do that or have got the choice to do that i don't think there's many people that would refuse to take that same opportunity if they had the chance and I think to um, want to be mindful not to a attack our friends in uh, non-specialist media. Um, it's an education process. And B, there is an element too where people could be ambassadors for the industry and speak up for their use of private jets and uh, or not just private jets, let's say private aviation. Yeah. Because a lot of private private aviation is in turboprops and especially to bring come back to the point that you were raised at the beginning the smaller aircraft um the the turboprop aircraft these do not have to be costly flights for people grouping together and gathering together and if you think about someone who's a really skilled business person being able to go across country and work in a factory or an area where there isn't that much travel connectivity without having to spend six hours on the road or yeah. on an expensive very expensive train ride and perhaps stay overnight the value if you look at the value of the flights it suddenly becomes a different prospect and i, I wish more people who did fly privately would speak up for it that would be my invitation to some of the users in this community so there you go now moving from a character and a personality to a, a, a journalist diplomat that was beautiful <laughs> makes a lot of sense and um no that, that I, I think that makes a lot of a, a lot of sense now you used a lovely term at the beginning when you said the aviation glastonbury oh yeah Okay, now I love that, and um, obviously Glastonbury and anybody who's been there, they know that there's headliners and there's there's um, you know old heroes that turn up. In all of your experiences now, in in the the three four years that you've been doing the videos and you've you've, you've changed direction, who would your headliners be? Usually, the unexpected people that you come across. So there'd be, talking of characters, you could go to an airfield and have a conversation. I'm, I'm going to have a shout out to Hania, who um, is a young woman who chairs the Human Powered Flight Society. And I don't know, my heroes is anyone who shows up it for the industry. I love young people coming in. Yep. Um, obviously, um, you know, I've got Steve Bassano invested in this business. Steve is great. And I know that you have interviewed. It was a great interview with him. Um, he's, he's definitely a character, isn't he? He is definitely, he says, he says it like he is. He says it yep. is. And he's definitely someone who's incredibly successful. And um, yeah, and, and very articulate and very, very listenable. Um, I would like, who else? Al White, definitely you've got to interview Al. Um, and 
also the women in the industry, my dear friend, Alison Chambers, who I would love, Jane Stanbury. Um, if I start, I could just reel off a whole lot <laughs> of names. In fact, I'll just give, yeah, I'll just be really boring about, I, I find it very hard not to like and find a character when you're in a conversation because you, I, I can see that you're the same. It, 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 you tease out the essence of somebody and then it's hard not to get a good interview. If someone's a bit guarded, it's finding a way to get underneath that and reassure them that you're not about to stitch them up or making them yeah, yeah. silly. And as soon as someone can relax, you get you know great stories, great entertainment value. Everyone's got a great life story in this industry. The fact that you're in it in the first place. Exactly, exactly. Well, Salem, I know you're listening there in the background. We've got some good leads there, my friend, so we'll definitely go with that. But just like Glastonbury, Liz, you know, if you get, if you get good acts on and, and you get the best out of them, that's what makes people want to come back for more. That, and, that's uh, the skill of the interviewer, though, as well. Um, I'm in really enjoying our conversation. You're, you've obviously, um, you like people. Yeah. And... I, I think, you know, if you can get someone so that they're relaxed with you, then you can get a great in, interview, great discussion with, with most people. Yeah, no, no, that's, and, and, and it, it's something that you want to enjoy. And, and, and I think when people, we, we started off with looking at the, the person behind the position so that anybody that was thinking of coming into the industry, and I think most of us, we fall into it. Nobody sits in a classroom and says, you know, I'm desperate to get into, well, in my case, it was cargo. I mean, it's about as glamorous as a, as a dirty rain make, you know, so it's not something that, that you sit there and think, that's for me. But once you're in it, you know, there's so much that goes on around any aircraft that lands or takes off anywhere. And those businesses are global. What, what one person does in one part of the world, somebody else is doing when it lands. And it's, it's such a great way of meeting people from all over and traveling. And I find cargo fascinating, you know, animals, transporting animals, transporting drugs, the different, um, where, you know, um, cargo in private aviation, life-saving, here's a big yeah. thing, private aviation, life-saving heart transplants and getting p things to hospitals. There are just so many great stories to say and to really yeah. champion our industry. Yeah. No, and I think you're, I think you're right there, Liz, because... You know, in one, in one sense, somebody's decrying somebody as they put it overnight success. And then in the next breath, somebody is flying a similar aircraft with a, a you know, a human organ that's saving somebody's life. So, you know, you can't have it both ways. I, I think it's, uh, it's something that definitely needs to be promoted in a very positive fashion. And I think I know the person who's going to take that on board. <laughs> now, with regard to your, to which we call them products, so you've got your 90 day pro, uh, projects, you have your story creation, aviation trade shows, et cetera. Do you want to just give us a little bit about each one of the types of products that, that you love to develop? Yeah, we, and we've shifted a lot. Um, we're updating the website now. COVID has really forced us to pivot slightly. Um, what I've found is I've been involved in a lot of virtual trade shows and events and been asked to speak or help put um video together so i've been doing quite a bit of zoom and zoom coaching and i say zoom it's any of the video platforms really and just really enabling people to start using this as a springboard first of all showing leaders how to show up as leaders you and i having a casual conversation now is great if someone had a really important piece of information to give to their either their employees if they're the boss or they were in a high level discussion i think now we've got to accept that at least for the foreseeable if not ad infinitum these virtual elements to events are going to stay yeah there a way that you can bring more people together ideally yes and especially in aviation we want to be together physically however this is an opportunity for us to expand these conferences and events beyond the room that we're in so leaders really need to be showing up as leaders for these calls so i've been doing some of that coaching so zoom as, as an element 
we have been filming remotely and we'll continue to um when i say remotely uh, i'll clarify with social distancing guidelines so yeah, yeah. Uh, we we were out as i say a few days ago we were out on site and adhering to every single bit of distancing guideline for an example um, our videographer had a microphone in a sealed bag that had been sealed for three days that he then passed um, it was disinfected to the subject the person who needed to put the mic um, we instructed him how to fix it to himself um, we had an auto cue we stepped back so it's really adhering to what we need to do in this environment so we're still filming yeah and in the last great which is great it's great and it's nice to create new content that way as well yeah, and then yeah. the last the last thing that we're really focusing on at the moment so we've got is creating videos from existing footage stock footage and even adding some of these zoom style interviews so they are in effect their videos and we were already doing that anyway we had produced a couple of those for clients before lockdown we'd started to move into that so there are three different aspects really there's if you will zoom and virtual trade shows there's virtual or videos that we assemble from yep. existing footage or create this zoom and mix that in or there's actual videos so long as we can get to a place yeah no, i think i i love the showing up as leaders because um when you have a crisis like we have now, and whether you look at, at governments, countries, major CEOs, board members, etc., nobody can say that they've got experience of such a major crisis and what it's doing. And there are no there are no experts anymore, so people are having to learn as they go. And that learning as you go is something that a lot of people can't do naturally. And the types and styles of leaders now, I think, are going to change especially for the next two years. It doesn't mean that the current leaders are not good. It just means that their, their skill set is for a better and a different time. Mm -hmm. So now it needs to be people, you know, who, who uh, think fast, talk slower, and can get people on board with the storyline. So I think that coaching must be so interesting. It's um, get people to be more effective and, and to give the proper message to a wider audience that they can't actually see in front of them. And, it, and it's been born by me being totally blown away and inspired by three. I'm going to name them to name check these, these women who would be great for your podcast. There's um, Catherine Bennett, who's the SVP of Airbus in the UK. Samati Sharma, who is the SVP of marketing for Virgin Atlantic in the UK, Virgin Holidays, sorry, Virgin Holidays. And Jackie Sutton, who's the Chief Customer Officer for Rolls-Royce, who's just taken on um, the co-chair of something called the Women, UK Women in Aviation and Aerospace Charter. And what that is, it's a charter that came out of um, an International Aviation Women's Association breakfast yeah. held in London two years ago, just before Farnborough 2018. And Catherine and Samarty, um, co-chaired it and led it for the first two years we've got 200 signatories now the intention is to bring a more level playing field into the industry and uh, Jackie has now taken on the chair from Catherine but still co-chairing with Samarty and working with these three incredible women on a, on a couple of um, conversations that we had one was for an IR work international aviation women's association event and one was just getting to interview them separately to help promote the charter because they were on uh, yep. another panel um during the farnborough virtual farnborough for me just absorbing this the, the vibes from them all three of them were going through the most incredible change and transformation in their companies and they were showing up as leaders and I was just helping them just, well, here's how you set the laptop up. Here's how you put the light. Here's how you, and as I was doing that and listening to them and observing what they were doing, I was thinking, well, here's something that if I can distill some of their energy and their presence, 
plus some technical skills and then pass that on to other people, which I have been doing subsequently, then there you have it. It's a way to show up. And, and all three of them have, um, you know, looking at what's happening in their companies and what they're dealing with. It, it is incredible that they're still so committed to the charter and very motivating. No, it, it is. And I've got to be honest with you. When, when we first had a chat, I said something to you about, um, you know, this diversity and, and focusing on, on people. And I made a statement, which, which I still believe in. I, I personally don't care what religion, what color, what age, what sex. If somebody's good enough, then you should give them the job. And not even whether you like them or dislike them or would like to meet them socially or whatever, give them a job if they're the best at it. But what you said was that lots of people in certain groups don't get the opportunity to enter that stage at the same level. And I started to think about that and, and you're hundred percent right. And if people don't have that parity or that, that equality at the beginning, then it's very hard to, to show, um, you know, what you may or may not do. And you said to me about if you were the only, uh, only one person of whatever, whatever kind, in a boardroom or in a big meeting, how do you feel? And um, I started thinking about, and I've been in a few situations like that, and I thought, how did I feel? And um, I remember how I felt, um, but obviously people people are, are different. But the people that you've named out, and then I thought to myself, I should name some of the ladies that have worked with me and for me. And uh, I got a couple here: there's Sandra Brito, Marion Friedel, Steffi Kuiper, and Christine Barringer, and they are some of the toughest, funniest, nicest, um, more capable people that I've ever worked with in this particular industry. And um, I think I think you're 100 right, 100% right. So we would love to interview any of those ladies because anybody that's doing something that's good for so many and putting their own name and reputation and and um, you know time into it, they, they deserve the shout. So, and I think the more of that, the more positivity, the better. And can I just say that I was, I headed up um, how I met um, the Iowa group in the first place. There's some br other brilliant women in there too. Um, that I headed up with Alison Chambers, the UK chapter of Women in Aviation International. We have now stepped out of that role and there are two incumbents, Tess Naren and Charlotte Rowe who are both going to take on, we're just doing the handover now, and they're gonna do a great job and committed to supporting them and to the Women in Aviation Group. I, I said at the outset when we started, we took on the leadership because it's an American organization. I only wanted to do it if we could absolutely liaise with every single other female in aviation group and ex larger extension all the aviation groups but particularly because there are so few women in the industry collaboration not competition so there's a british yeah, yeah. pilot association the international aviation women's association um and there are women in various disciplines right across the industry and have their own groups and um i would love and i hope it happens in my lifetime that it becomes a really archaic term women in because there are there's much more equality we just see far far more women in the industry it's no longer a rarity to see a woman on a board or in a very senior leadership role yeah i think that's 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 the point i was trying to make it my understanding is it's such a shame that they've got these labels and titles you know irrespective of which group and it should just be well that's who it is in business that's who the the, the top person is or the board or the top manager or whatever and I love the term when you said UK chapter, it makes me think of Hell's Angels. <laughs> yeah. So it, instead, of, instead of Sons of Anarchy, we could say Ladies of Anarchy or Ladies of Aviation. So I can just picture it. And every single one of these groups, by the way, Chris, and it's lovely that you name checked the women that you admire there who've worked for you. Um, all the breaks I had in my career have come from very supportive men and every single one of these groups is like actually we want to be engaged with men in the conversations it this is it's a world that works for everybody and it's in everybody's interest to have more women in the industry more people of color to for people to feel free to um, embrace their sexuality and be who they are because there are studies that actually prove that the more diverse a board is 
was a McKinsey study, um, that that will result in a 28% increase in revenues over the course of, or not will, that's not the, that it did. Yeah, yeah. And um, conversely, when boards are not mixed, companies underperform other benchmark companies in their sector. So there's a very great financial incentive there, aside from any of the ethical, moral, spiritual, social, anything else. If you just want the cold, hard figures, it's worth doing. Yeah, yeah. But, it, but it's also like a family, isn't it? You, you know what I mean? You have different ages, different, different everything. And yeah. it works so much better. You know, so it's 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 great. You just reminded me now is that there was another absolutely beautiful human being and one of the best dangerous goods specialists I ever met, a lady called Pushpa, when I was in Qatar Airways. And uh, I don't know whether she'd ever listen or whether anybody knows her, but they were stars. And and if I had to pick a dream team or whatever, all of them would be in it. And mm -hmm. um, without without a shadow of a doubt, you said um, nice to name the ladies that worked for me. I think if you met, if you said that to some of them, they'd say, yes, we reported to him, but he actually worked for us. They were very clever. They were very, very good. Sounds like Getting things done in a certain way. Yeah, no, brilliant. Yeah. Now, what would your ideal blank canvas be if you were given carte blanche now to come up and do something for the industry? What would that, what would that principle or what would that, um, that subject matter be? It would be flying around different airfields, me interviewing some of these amazing, particularly women at the moment, um, and saying, look, here's job, just to show rather than tell, here's some jobs, here's some great stuff that you can do, and giving me a chance to reactivate the long dormant flying license that I talk about a lot that I kind of look at. But I do have a client who, um, yeah, I'm going to talk to him about a project. I've got an idea. You, you've um, triggered. That would be my ultimate. Yeah, I'd just like to go to different airfields, be in the air, and talk to great people. That would be fantastic. So you could do like a roving, a roving uh, geographical storytelling of where okay. these great, where these great people are based and why they're they're as successful as they are. Yeah, or even not necessarily high, high, further along. Yeah. yeah really high in their career yet just you know here's some cool stuff here's yeah. some cool stuff to look at and i refrain yeah. from swearing there so i'm very pleased yeah yeah good on you around the world in 80 days or around a region in 80 days that would be a nice uh be a lovely thing to do huh yeah it, oh it would yeah they'd be, you know yeah very happy to do that yeah that would be my dream on project so maybe there'll, maybe there'll be somebody out there now at the moment now um a difficult situation for a lot of companies so obviously one of the most important things at the moment is cash flow and all governments around the world are opening up hoping that people can get enough cash in that you know please god if there is a second wave they'll be able to last through until march or april of next year vaccines and everything else but in some cases certain expenditure is worthwhile now we've been talking about you know magazines and and straight away as soon as something happens cut your marketing cut your training unnecessary capex etc etc all the usual things but in some cases investing a small amount in things like you're doing actually helps with the communication to large workforces keeps them informed and also puts a, a, a sort of a human and a passionate touch to the difficult decisions that people are having to make and we've had some podcasts on recently and, and one guy who was on uh, Mervyn Walker He's a straight talker anyhow, and he's the sort of man and the personality that you need when there's a crisis. Mm -hmm. But he says it as it is, but he doesn't say it in a cold manner. And I think sometimes if the staff actually see certain people who are leading through a crisis explaining something or being direct, so there's no rumour in, there's no you know misunderstandings, I think it's a very, very effective way of communication, which again is your style of, of, of filmmaking. And I think that's excellent. So I think that's that's value for money, even when cash flow is is limited. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Yeah, and we've been doing some really great work actually. A shout out to the British Business and General Aviation Association who've commissioned us, and we've been working with them right through to um, have conversations. They've been having conversations 
with their members and with the industry in general, uh, very practical things, you know, what to be doing about your insurance during this time. And the big thing that people really need to be remembering, because we've had all this to deal with, that, you know, in five months time, we're going to be Brexiting. Yeah, and yeah. It's very important, particularly for aviation companies, that they're going to be compliant and up to speed with what's, the implications are for them and to get as prepared as you know we can be because we've gotten that little um shadowy figure in the background but it, it's vital that people are prepped for it yeah 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 no it's amazing isn't it how something took over every front page and every household conversation and now all of a sudden you know it's 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 dwarfed into well where it should be i mean i i can't understand how people can't come to a collaborative and, and the best decision for the entire, you know, the entire old union and the, and the new relationships that are necessary. It, it just beggars belief as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, sorry, I've got the inevitable. Just it's okay, yeah. Not to do, got the cat behind me, so you can see a cat. It's a very, yeah, a very, a, a very nice, nice, uh, nice tail there that's sticking it's, up, but it's black it, and white, yeah. Yeah, it is, it needs to. <laughs> to go yes i mean what with forest fires a pandemic uh, a royal meltdown yeah you yeah it, you know uh, black lives matter uh the, you name it this year has we've had challenges at a presidential impeachment there's been a lot to push brexit off the front page however it is definitely something which and props to the BBGA, they are ensuring that people need to put focus back on that because yeah, yeah. it's going to have an implication for their business. Yeah. And, and I'm with you, but you know, it's, we have to deal with what, what is yeah. and how to plan and prep accordingly. Yeah, uh, exactly. Now, one, one, one last thing I'd just like to run by you. Now, imagine you had to do, you had to do a very short video to explain to people why they should respect the request to wear masks. Okay, now, as far as I'm concerned, I, I've, I've lived all over the world and, and certain parts of the world are more receptive to wearing masks because it's part of their culture and they're used to it. But if you look at you know, what happened with the trigger day on Friday and how many people didn't, even prominent politicians were caught out. But I, I believe now traveling, and I, and I traveled just recently, if people were given very clear instructions, if you want to travel on our airline, if you want to travel through this airport, you shall wear a mask. If you don't wear a mask, you won't be allowed in and you won't be traveling. And then it makes passengers feel more comfortable. It makes the poor cabin crew feel more comfortable and people don't have to step up and try and be the police or whatever. Now, how would you put that across to people? I'd first of all show people the consequences of wearing a mask and not. And I do that visually by having um, two people facing each other. I'd use some graphics on here too and show that if you're breathing into a mask, the droplets that aren't coming out, then I would remove the masks and show the droplets. If one person has a mask off, the droplets coming to them. And then if the other, I'd probably do it the other way around actually and then show that what happens when you've got two masks on that you don't you haven't got the droplets and then I would go into from blah blah we're going to have to do this and it, obey the law this is why and the con I'd also give the consequences that you may be refused but it right up front I've explained here's the information and the word and the reasons why Here's the reasons why, just do it visually. No judgment, no, oh, you yeah, yeah. you're a bad person. It's just here's, and here's what will happen. If you show up without mask, you will be refused entry. Yeah. So people can then make their own, even end it on, it's up to you, the choice is yours. Because if you know that's a consequence, you've got the information, you know why. That I think would satisfy the vast majority of people, um, listening there's a there's a great um it's a lady called gretchen rubin who has described four ways we absorb information with four different styles of information and uh, some people are questioners so they always want to know why 
some people are upholders so those people are most likely to say oh, well you know what i will yeah i'm told what to do i'm not going to question I'm yeah. not gonna, they're the easiest ones with that then you've got people who are obligers and because they like to oblige they'll they'll do that anyway the questioners are partly um, the difficult cases because they want to know by but then the likes of me i'm a rebel and I'm like, well, I'm not, you told me I'm not doing it. And all the rebels really are probably most likely the people you're seeing around who haven't got the masks. Now, for me, because I know about that diagram and it's in my best interests for, um, and I've got a bit of obliger in me too, but I will wear the mask because that's, you know, I can see there's a value in it. So it's giving a piece of information in a way that works for all of those uh, styles of accepting instructions is the way forward so that's why i would do it show then show the consequences and then offer the choice because you know if you're going to show up to the airport without a mask you're going to be refused entry so but you already know in advance yeah and i think what you covered there and when you were describing it i could visualize it and then when i'm looking at you know boris and some of the some of the people that are trying to explain it and they're trying to talk about common sense and you have to consider this and as soon as they start talking they're starting to confuse and make the issue gray again and i think the visuals and simplicity is what they need to do now and um, I, I was in spain recently and, and the area i've never seen anything so safe every single person wearing masks down the road in the restaurants everything was done really well and and they've got strong hefty fines so they're they're fining people if they're not wearing a mask and they're finding them an extra amount if they've got it hanging on their arm or in their pocket and they haven't worn it. Mm. And, and I just think, you know, sometimes a little bit of clarity and to the point, it makes more sense. And your visualization, which is what you specialize in, is an art. Thank you. And we're almost at the end now. So you've mentioned loads of people. We've got loads of leads and it's a star packed aviation glastonbury so i think if anybody was able to get all of those people together it'd be a great show um really really a pleasure having you on board i know how committed you are to doing this and, and it's very easy once you watch some of your material so long may that last liz and i hope you get your 80 days around the world uh, offer from someone because i think that would be something worthwhile maybe even the bbc so they you know they could they could commission that to um, you know to see what's going on in the world and i think the most important thing is whatever you do it should be done in a positive and a, and, a, and just a, a little bit of fun and that's not taking away anything from you know from people that have suffered during the pandemic but mm -hmm. people need to now start focusing on positives and and uh, you know getting back to being able to smile at each other even with the mask on you can buy them with the smile on the front. I know it's great. Yeah, I've seen I've seen some of that. It's great, but it's also nice now seeing people. I mean, I, I, I've lived in the Middle East for a long time, but I'm I'm used to it. But it, it it makes it more interesting to see people's eyes. And if you look at their eyes and you listen to them talking, you you you, you hear a different a different. You know, it's 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 weird, mm. but it's good. It's good. Liz, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Um, I, I I'm assuming you're wearing red because you're a rebel. But, um, uh, I do. I always wear red. Do you? Is that your? I always wear red. I'm the lady in red. People know me as a lady in red. So any anything I do uh, for business, I always wear a red dress. So if you look at any of the recent videos, or you know, if you ever see me out and about, I'm the lady in red. So um, so you've got all the you've got all the Christopher's albums and and everything else. Oh no, no. Oh, he's good. This, some of his stuff is good. I will always remember you now as the lady in red and, and that's how the post will go up. Thank you. And then anybody who wants to get in touch and, and find out where I got the term one leg in the air from, I'll be more than happy to explain that later on as well. More than happy for you to show that. I, I was very proud of that. I thought I was relatively flexible. Yeah, <laughs> more than no. a bit of a mystery. <laughs> yeah, no, fair play to you. Listen, Liz, thank you so much. Good luck with everything you do. And it's an absolute pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you, you too. Thanks, Chris.